I'm very conscious I'm eating into your lunch break, so I'm um, sort of a terrible choice of words. I'll be as uh, I'll get on with this as quick as I can. Um, okay, today I'd like to talk to you about a, a project that took place in March this year. Um, the project was to create a geospatial tool using Python um, to really solve a plethora of use cases. One example is if you're looking to site a new NHS site, like a GP practice or a, a diabetes centre, where would you want to do this and what do you need to take into account to do this? So, you know, identifying existing sites, catchment areas, substitutes, um, next best service, working out access, time to travel for patients um, or service users, and delivering this visually so you can impact and deliver to a non-technical audience as well. Mattia Ficarelli uh, and I were given a week, just one week to do the project that you're about to see, um, to see how far we could get in this time. Um, Mattia is a software engineer on our team who worked with us um, for over two years, but he's recently left the NHS, so you're afraid you're left with me for this project. So scoping. What's out there currently? Um, we didn't want to reproduce an existing piece of work. There's no value in us wasting NHS time to rebuild something that's already been better resourced. So what is out there? Shapeatlas.net is a wonderful piece of software. It was built by uh, Public Health England. It's a st strategic health asset planning and evaluation tool. Not very easy to say, but good acronym. It's a brilliant piece of software. Um, it has everything from data from LSOA layers to age breakdowns for areas in healthcare service locations, but it is closed. So what's our differential? We wanted to produce a piece of software or code that anyone could run in the NHS and adapt to their own needs. Um, and keeping it flexible, open, using open source tooling and freely available data. Um, I'll come back to this later on in the presentation when we discuss uh, current use cases. So the split between Matera and myself. Um, Matera had done some previous work on GP practices before using the Epica data set. He wanted to see if he could develop this further and take into account travel times to GP practices specifically walking times. He then also decided to look at different means of transport and identifying times of travel depending on time of day. I focused on two, the two further functions, both of which used Matthias' work as a, a platform, springboard, and tried to take that development further. Could I identify possible gaps in services using the travel time code that Matthias deployed? Could I then combine motor transport, so potentially walking public transport for an end user and see where their shortest route functionality may be to a GP practice. Practically, this piece did have proved to have a few problems. I mean, how do you stop your computer crashing when you're running OSMX, MNX nodes and edges on a, a very dense area? So I think London and GP practices, how many are there? So for a proof of concept piece like this, we decided to use Cambridge, a smaller town for mapping um, and data size issues. Technical aspects of this work had to be reusable open source, non-proprietary. So GeoPandas, GeoJSON files, isochrones, Folium, all of these harness the ability to really turn a geodata frame from isochrone polygons into GeoJSON files. And the plan was to go away, work separately, but build on each other's work. So I'll run through the four areas we took this for, then delve a little deeper into one of them, um, given the time limitations in the presentation. GP practices in Cambridge. Matia used the Folium library to map uh, Cambridge postcodes CB1 to CB5, they're the blue area in the left diagram, and then added GP practices for these areas using the coordinates, longitude, and latitude. Folium gives you the ability for an interactive map, um, and you can turn on the layers one by one. He then added OSM M and X nodes and edges and the data run for Cambridge. And then on the right, you see the walking times color coordinated for GP practices. He then subsequently built isochrome polygons, one of the, what the, the picture on the left. In the centre of each polygon, where the red is, that's the five minute walking time around GP practice. Orange is 10, yellow 20. And we've used, we had to estimate walking time, we used 4.5 kph. He converted the polygons to GeoJSON files, overlaid these on a folium map, and here's where you get the interactivity. On the right you see GP practices with the, the polygons overlaid, and you can turn on five, 10, or 20 minute walk for these distances and see where there may be gaps or how, impact, how impactful any gaps in service may be within Cambridge for these. So whilst OMX is a really useful package, um, it does ass assume free flow travel times and you have to fix the speed at which you may go through a city. I'm sure you're aware, but in major cities such as London, um, free, free flow speed is rarely achieved, especially during rush hour. In this section of the project, Matia explored combining Uber movement data with OSM and X to estimate travel times between a GP practice in St John's Wood and St Thomas's Hospital. The left picture shows a rendering in OSM and X of nodes and edges for central London, and the right, the Uber movement data overlaid both for free flow 
and for peak rush hour. And the table gives you the times that he calculated for this. Part three, this is the part of the project, my part of the project. Um, I wanted to see if I could identify gaps in services using open source tools and freely available data. Um, I live in the East Midlands, my in-laws live in Lincolnshire, um, so I thought let's see what we could do with A&E services and the next level, what you might call urgent care centres in what is a pretty sparsely populated area of the UK. On the right, so on, your, um, on your right is the four 24-hour A&E services in Boston, um, Scunthorpe, Grimsby and Lincoln. When I was conducting my research for this part of the project, I couldn't easily find NHS data sets with different hospital departments. So, for example, maternity units or urgent care centres. I think that has changed now, but this was done back in March. So the problem evolved from being a catchment area and coverage issue one to being twofold. How can I find the next level of services and layer on top of what you might call first level A&E emergency care? And then add in Matthias code for time to travel via road in what is a sparsely populated and in some sense a remote part of England. Code, solve the problem. I had my hospital data set. A little investigation showed me unsurprisingly we had four in the largest populated towns and cities in Lincolnshire. But it struck me, why can't you just search for what you're looking for and then add this in in Python? Why do we have to have this closed frame approach limiting us by which data sets are available? So I looked into an API key using Google Maps search and wrote some code, which you see here, to output the results, but purely here just with longitude and latitude. The top cell here is the search box that comes up in my VS code um, and ran around the previous slides code. And when I ran urgent care center Lincolnshire, you get the results laid out as before, and you could use this for anything. Adding those in to the previous map, the blue circles are now the urgent care centres overlaid on the same open street map, folio map, uh, with the A&E services in green. On the right, we've added in driving times at, I guess, 40 miles an hour, because it's more country roads. So that would be how far you may be from an accident emergency or an urgent care centre should you need to jump in your car and drive. The fully rendering isochromes and taking it back to what we have with the folio map, you can turn on those layers here, 10, 20, 30 minutes as well. So part four, I was trying to combine, um, I guess, modes of transport here. And also, when you look at somewhere like London, that map on the right took about eight hours to run just to produce all these onto a Friday map. So you can imagine the practicalities of trying to do this. And this part of the project did remain uh, incomplete, I'd say, after one week's work. We took it quite far, but couldn't calculate full shortest route functionality in, with multiple layers of transport during that time. But that brings me to the part of the project of where we are now. Um, since publishing the repo, and this is up on our uh, NHSX GitHub page, and we have github.io as well for an explanation and a walkthrough of this, we've had two asks. I currently manage a PhD student with uh, ESNEF Trust, um, at South East, uh, North East Essex and Suffolk Trust. He is looking into diabetes and inequalities data. As part of his investigation, he wanted to see where are GP practices that have diabetes specialisms or diabetes nurses. That's not easy available information. So we reproduced that code and run it for GP practices and found out uh, is there any link to where GP practices with diabetes nurses, are they performing better in diagnosing or sending people for referral to a diabetes centre? Second ask came from the ESNF Trust as well. Can we calculate multiple shortest route functionality for our patients? Can we add that into potential appointment examination of when people are missing appointments? So we've started to be asked for some use cases around this repo. Um, and everything I presented so far was dormant, I guess, from March, but it's recently become reactive. Current areas we're working on. Very lucky to work with some talented individuals and the DART team who bring up their time. Our BI developer, Ollie Jones, is turning part of this project into a Streamlit app where we hope to host, um, at least if it's run, sorry, I can't say hosting, I'll get into trouble for that. We can give you the code for you to host it on your computer. <laughs> But there should be pages within this, and we're going to keep on adding. That's the first page from the first project I showed you. We will keep on adding functionality to this. So we can not just tackle individual use cases, but you can hopefully adapt this for your own use as well. Next area, we're trying to solve maximum coverage location. So when you do want to score a site, think what McDonald's do when they want to put a new McDonald's in a town, or Aldi. Why can't we do that for the NHS and effectively give you a grid, score population, score a variety of other metrics, and hand you a tool that does that for you. Fies is going to be working on that, and Mary, once she has finished being too busy with the conference, will be giving up some of her time as well. Thank you in advance. Um, third part, 
multiple shortest route functionality. It's a very crude map of Cambridge with Addenbrookes Hospital at the bottom there. I wrote this at the weekend, I think it was after a football match on Sunday. But um, you can now just put in an address, it doesn't have to be longitude, latitude. Um, and this is just one piece of very basic Python code now that gives you the distance and works out four different addresses for you. That's to, the, to address the use case we're asked for. We're going to be for, reform, reformatting, refactoring this and hopefully adding this to the streaming app as well. And lastly, um, this is the part of the project I call the Big Solve. Um, we're very lucky to be working with Google Health Partnership, of which Adam and Nick are here today, so thank you for coming. Um, they're giving up 20% of their time each week to help work with us. And um, we're trying to reduce the amount of time it takes to load and run this product. Everything I presented to you today takes multiple 20, 30 minutes at least, if not hours. The big solve for us is turning this from something that is relatively unusable, unless you have a lot of time in your hands, into taking it into seconds. So they are currently working on Volunai diagrams and sharding, loading different areas of um, the UK that can be loaded and load a lot quicker. And I guess the functionality that you're all used to when you use a mapping tool, can we reproduce that type of analysis and have that working within this as well? Additionally, the map, the picture you see here is adding LSOA data in, which is another area that Max has been working on from Google Health as well. Um, if we can add all these types of scoring and different types of metrics into this, we can effectively build that Max coverage location with this as one of the, the scoring metrics that can go into that calculation alongside travel times as well. We're not limiting to these four areas. We'd like to be able to add to them going forward um, and to address further use cases as they come up. And hopefully the more of this work gets known the more use cases will come out of people in this room and elsewhere. Um, we want it to stay adaptable and be out there and be flexible and be current and stay needed. So if you do have any ideas or any use cases or contributions, please get in touch. Um, I've only put my email out there, not my LinkedIn or GitHub like everyone else does, so I've been underprepared. But please get in touch if you have any collaborations, if you'd like to add to it, it is open source and on our GitHub repo. Um, and lastly, I should say, this is a proof of concept piece of work. Um, but it is something we'd like to be able to deliver over the next few weeks and uh, into next year. Thank you.